The People's Countryside Environmental Debate Podcast. 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 Uh, is there a lack of representation and diversity in the arts? Um, I'm not totally sure I agree with that. How can we challenge beauty standards and promote body positivity? This is the People's Countryside Environmental Debate Podcast. What I can guarantee you, there's no plan, no prep, no research, no scripts. It's all off the cuff. There are enough experts out there. Myself and William don't have to make ourselves out to be experts. We're just ordinary guys. Where this is the People's Countryside Environmental Debate Podcast, we answer listener questions that you guys send in, and we try and spin it round to the natural world and the environment in some way. Uh, I'm basically I, I, I'm I, I'm a an, an full time environmental social justice campaigner. I don't go out there waving lumps of cardboard around, but I do it surreptitiously in the background. Who's the co-host? Well, my name is William Manclo, but as Stuart says, we're two ordinary guys, and one of us is more ordinary than the other one. So yeah, you work it out. I'll let you decide that. You listening there, sat there eating your toffee crisp. Yep, sharing your last Rolo. Yeah, eating eating your last your last finger of your of your fudge. Yeah. Do you remember my Rolos? I I, I last time I ate a Rolo, right? It was mm-hmm. a Sunday evening. When do you remember this? On Preston railway station. Right. Very late. How no trains. There was no cafes open. And the only food I could get out of the vending machine was a packet of Rolos. And I thought, if anybody comes up to me now, they ain't getting my last Rolo because that's all I could eat. <laughs> anyway, go on. I can't believe you actually remembered that. That mm. was the last thing. But yeah, so we have two questions again to, to discuss, which is you, know, you, you, the listener, are sending in from us. We've got a question from Iceland, not the shop, the, the, the country. Mm. And we've got a question for Puerto Rico. Yeah, so basically we like to break down the silence that perpetuates the systems that keep driving the negative way we live. And we try and do that through confronting the big issues in this podcast. And we try and normalise those big issues by talking about them openly. And we aim to challenge our beliefs, mindsets and habits. And hopefully, in turn, it challenges yours. And uh, we're two guys just basically willing to explore the, the big issues with, with no preparation. We, we explore, explore it in real time. And we just like to show that because we don't know something about this, a subject, it doesn't mean we, we don't, can't have an opinion on it. Mm. But also our opinion doesn't have to be fact. Mm. But I'm chuckling slightly because William's got to pronounce this name of this, this, this person from Iceland. Now, to me, it looks like Sigador. But how are you pronouncing it, William? Uh, I believe the name is pronounced Siwadush. That might be the worst. Might be the worst pronunciation ever. So, yeah. uh, see um, so I can hear all the Icelandic going like this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a that's a very niche reference to it. <laughs> that's a football reference. Yeah, it's a very niche reference. Right, so see with this question. I'm getting better at this now. Um, getting a better at the pronunciation or better at butchering it mm. um so from capital region so near Reykjavik probably I've butchered that as well uh in Iceland their question is what can we do to adjust the lack of representation and diversity in the arts uh, is there a lack of representation and diversity in the arts um I'm not totally sure I agree with that yeah I so. um my first thought there that the art naturally in, uh, attracts what society call the odd characters. Mm, the eccentrics. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the people who are maybe missing out are, are, are the mainstream. Um, I don't know. That's just my first look at that. Um, but representation and diversity. Representation is a very powerful thing. I do, I'm all for it. But I'm also a cynic. We've, I've spoken about this a number of times on this podcast. There was a couple, couple of years ago, there was a... A young footballer played for Blackpool, I think. Yeah. And he came out as being gay. Now, I said at the time, I do wonder if he, he did it willingly or he did it before somebody else announced it. Mm. But then, then at the time I said, well, what's he going to do with that? When he's come out, well, what's he going to do with it? You know, you have to do more than just say these words, you know. And so I think representation is more than just coming out. More than... More than 
I think representation is you can represent by just living your true self yes. without. And, I, and I'm talking about uh, again, just focusing on what it is to be gay. I don't think society has moved on that much if gay people have to come out mm. because you don't announce you're heterosexual. Mm. So I think we've really moved on when a gay person just suddenly, I don't know, well, he doesn't even suddenly do anything. He just, or she, just lives their life without having to say anything. They are just the person they, they are. Yeah. So rep yeah. being rep representation, I think, is great. Yes. But I think it's uh, the way we think b behaviours are that allow representation. I think they're a bit shallow at times. Often the stories that I hear from people who are, say, from ethnicities, mm. particularly that are not highly big, that didn't, don't, didn't have a big representation in particular things like maybe arts, mm. maybe sports, is they would follow some. But so there was always a there would always be a trailblazer. And that 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 really good trailblazer would actually be somebody who, like you say, just are doing their thing, mm. regardless. That they're just being their self. Mm. Um, they would get criticism, of course. They will do. There will there will be um, people who are prejudiced against them, but they they inspired the the next generation of, mm. of from that particular diversity, from that particular area, from that particular ethnicity, by just going out there and get just going out there and and being themselves mm. and it actually meant that uh, there's a there, I, i'm definitely a, be, a believer in you've got to see it to be it mm. so if you can see somebody who is who looks and sounds the similar way to you doing something mm. that doing doing anything particularly art uh, yeah. that will actually encourage somebody to I mean, there's so many there's there so many artists out there I, I think there is a real diversity mm. in you know i think there's a real there's a real bit really big representation in art mm. i think maybe it doesn't necessarily get into the mainstream but i don't think that's a real problem but i think the people who are uh, to, to make um yeah this may not be a problem but the lack of representation and diversity i think that is because the mainstream isn't in there in the arts we need to be mm. encouraging the the normal people to 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 uh i don't know put in a museum and a, an unmade bed and call that art, you know, it's mm. talking about Tracy M in there, but, um, but yeah, I, th I think the people who aren't uh, represented in art are the mainstream. I think though that I'm just thinking of an action already is so many of us go through life with our eyes closed and our ears closed to new things. I hear so many people talk about the fact that there is no such, there's no good or new or modern music is terrible. I entirely disagree. Absolutely entirely disagree. There's some absolutely phenomenal art and phenomenal music being produced. I think there's also a diversity in that music as well. I'm beginning to see, particularly over the last 10 years, a lot more, say, for example, I'm, I like guitar-based music. I won't say rock music, in, uh, uh, but I do like guitar-based music. And I'm noticing a lot more um, female bands, fully female bands, becoming successful which wasn't necessarily a thing even in the 90s mm. they, they, they were seen as a bit of a still in the 90s they were seen, seen in some ways in some quarters from some from some places as a bit of a novelty i'm thinking of bands like elastica is a good example yeah choreographed and drawn together yeah. well no not choreographed but what i mean is that they they were seen as a bit of a novelty they weren't seen as being normal you right. know norm, normal that diversity wasn't there but i mm. think there's a lot more diversity in art my, from my own perspective mm. than there ever has been Mm. Because people are maybe just being a bit more acceptant, but people, the population, population in general as a whole, we seem to like we seem to like things that are conformed to the, you know things that make us feel safe. You know, we make us feel like um, we, we we understand it rather mm. than actually going out and finding things that maybe make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. We mm. we want to watch the things like. Coronation Street and Erin Everdale or we want to watch Love Island and that type of thing and consume that, that sort of media yeah. where it's it's predictable but actually go out there and be, be a little bit just go out and find something that will, that, will be, that will actually maybe change the course of your life a little bit because it's a little bit left field it's a, it'll make you think about the world a little bit differently it'll make you walk down the street a little bit differently well, as well tie shit up in a slightly different way exactly yeah exactly. anyway anyway that's the first question the second question is coming from a completely different part of the world, Puerto Rico. 
And another nice short question. Who's that from? It's from Hortensia in. And now, can you pronounce them the place name? Not Puerto hum- Rico. Yeah. Humaceo? Hum- 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 Humaceo, Puerto- maybe. Yeah, uh, Puerto Rico. We can tell we didn't look at the how, how we've pronounced this name. We, we looked at uh, uh, Sir- Sirudush's name. Yeah. I think uh, that's a male's name, Sirudush. It very could possibly, possibly could be. And yes. then Hortensia, I think, is a female. So Hortensia's question for Puerto Rico, and again, I think this is not Hortensia's first mm. question. Uh, Hortensia, mm, not then. Sure. Yeah, I think your job to say, but I think she's been on before. I'm not sure. Yeah, Hortensia's question then is, um, how can we challenge beauty standards and promote body positivity? It, it, I would just start by encouraging everybody to. Um, love their love their body for what it is, you know. It's even yours. Um, love the, love yourself, because yeah. it's the it's your, it's your body. It's yeah. what you live in every day, and we always want to. It always appears that there's this drive to want it to look a bit different, look look, look a little bit more toned and less fat, mm. or you might want to change your. You, you might be might be very white and pale, and you want to be tanned, or you you mm. might feel you've got too your skin feels too dark, and you want it to be paler. You might have darker hair, and you want light hair. It's just like be proud of your own body. I, I think body positivity is definitely a, a thing. There's a lot of fat shaming, for example. Mm. There's a lot of skinny shaming, probably as well. You know, people people have always got an opinion about some how somebody else looks. I'm not sure Hortensia has look, uh, left a question before. I've had a quick look. I think there's been some from Panama, and Hortensia's mm. got a number to come. So I think we may have looked at her name. That's down very there. possible. Yes. But, what's, um, so what's your what's your what's your t- what's your take on the how, question? How can we challenge beauty standards and promote body po- body positive? Very similar to the previous question. In the sense of people just need to get on and live their life, and you know, in not not appear to be put there as an uh, because of how they look. It's like you get a lot of adverts on the telly. There's a lot of skinny women on there, and now they're saying we want to have larger women. But now it's gone the other way. You sort of feel this this person's on there because. Uh, because she's she's larger, is it? Do you feel that's a bit of a tick box? Yeah, so, yeah. And so if it, if it was just, it's still about the size. Mm. You know, it's it still, you know, it, don't even know. I mean, I still go back. I had this when I was a nipper. I didn't notice people were brown, <laughs> and I lived down the Cowley Road, and most people were brown down there in the seventies. Anyway, um, I had a friend at primary school called Amin. We used to hang around together. I was only at that primary school for about three months. Anyway, I went, then went to move, moved house and went to another primary school. And it was probably another six years before me and Amin met again. And we were at um, middle school. I said, you Amin? He said, yeah, you're Stuart, aren't you? I said, yeah, I don't remember you being brown, I said. I had no idea. He was just Amin. You know, I don't, I don't know if he was skip, fat, thin, brown, black, white. I don't know. He just knew him as the name. Yeah, and I think that's that's how where we need to be aiming to get to with body yeah. image. Yeah. But the question isn't isn't that is how do we challenge beauty standards and promote body positive? Well, actually, I think a good way of challenging it is a it is uh, more people living with a good dose of fuck it. You yeah. know, just getting out there and yes, and then. Know, also, you, you, you've touched upon this before about support as well. Mm. You know, the actual community supporting these, supporting everybody else. You know, the community is full of very different people, mm. of different um, ideals, different uh, views on the world, and different sizes, different mm. shapes, different sizes. We all come in. It always amazes me. And we, I did this walk, this three day walk over. Um, the August bank holiday. The August bank holiday this year, and uh, I think I must have walked past over three hundred people, and, and probably even more actually. And what, what struck me is is that just how many different body shapes and sizes that I saw. Because you, know, what, what I, you might think that a bit unusual that I'm, I'm remembering that, but because we were fundraising, every person I'd walk up to, I would, I would clap eyes on and actually try and get try and get eye contact mm. because I wanted to interact and you know show what we're doing and have a potential conversation about it and 
the amount of different sh- face shapes and mm. eye shapes and everything shapes mm. <laughs> it, it shows me and, and uh, walking styles uh, my sister does a lot of running and she's noticed this as well everybody has a very different running style you know there's a lot of there are trolls on the internet that would say that's not the right way to run but you run the way your body is shaped mm. <laughs> you know again that goes to but that goes that goes into the body positivity part of it and i think to challenge beauty standards is like you say yeah fuck it have the fuck it attitude mm. and for the, for not everybody has that 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 in them. No, no, but, uh, but, but enough people need to. Yeah, have, have, but have, but I think there I think there's enough people that also would be those who will actually have it a fuck it attitude for other people. Yeah, and stand up for them. I remember Sue, my wife, she had that situation. I told you this. Her mum said uh, a number of years ago now, well, two or three. So Sue so, so stopped dyeing her hair, and it started to go a bit grey. With well, the grey started to show, mm. and her mum said. Oh, I couldn't let myself go like that. <laughs> well, don't mean anything by it. It's just a guy couldn't let myself go like that. I said, well, you do mean something by it. Mm. And um, That is an unnecessary comment. And uh, and then uh, I remember, I said, what does Stuart think about it? <laughs> Sue said he doesn't care. He dyed his hair red. <laughs> he doesn't care what colour people's hair are. You know, you've dyed your hair red and you've dyed your hair yellow and dyed your hair green. Yeah, All blue, different... blue as well. Yeah, because you yeah. you were making a you were making a, a, a an environmental statement with yeah. your, uh, your hair. Yeah. Um, my, my wife's hair is slowly turning, beginning to turn grey. She gets mm. she gets these flecks of grey in her hair, and from my point of view, I just I just it just shows her transition through life. You mm. know? She's getting older. Yeah, if you dye if you dye your hair to try and hide the fact it's grey. It looks like you've dyed grey hair because the texture changes. <laughs> but you dyed know. hair, I've, I mean, this is talking from somebody who actually has dyed their hair when they were younger and I stopped doing it because I realised just how fake it looked. Mm. Uh, oh I yeah, s- it doesn't look real. I've seen on, I see, this has gone on of a tangent, but I, I'm on Reddit on a regular basis and somebody had put on Reddit, you know, should I have my hair this colour, this colour, this colour, this colour, this colour? And I was thinking, well, what's your natural colour? Just mm. stay with your natural colour. Be, and there's, mm. that's a part of, I think that's all part of body positivity, mm. really. Uh, I like that. Body positivity is an interesting phrase for me because it's uh, it's like, well, it basically it kind of like it seems to be an anti- to antidote to the idiots in the world, who who have the, who are who are very are very short sighted and, and and think they think they know everything and they, they they know what a woman should look like, they know what a man should look like, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You shouldn't be that fat. You shouldn't be that thin. You should be. You should be more muscular. You shouldn't be too muscular. That sort of thing. And I think. I think that body positivity is almost like an antidote to that. For me, I, I just, as you say, is that that it was Amin you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, Amin. Yeah. You know, the, actually, the most important thing is, what's your name? Mm. What's your, what? What's in your head? What are you thinking? And um, I've got friend. I've got a couple of friends who are significantly younger than me. Um, and I often, when I'm having a conversation with them, uh, that's that person, that's that person's name. And really the most important distance is not the distance in age. It's not the distance in in, in mm. ethnicity. It's not the distance. The most important, important distance is the distance between you and the person. <laughs> yeah. You're having a conversation, you know, it's that is the important distance. Mm. Because you're just, you just, you're just having a, a genuine conversation with somebody. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's answered any of these questions. This this question, but uh, yeah, mm. we've had a good go at it. Yes, we both. We always. That's the one thing we always do on this podcast. We always have a good, a good discussion and a good mm. go at actually discussing the questions that sent sent in. So mm. hopefully, Altentia, this has helped you with that. Well, this is I uh, discussed that question. We always re- uh, say send your questions in for us to discuss. Yeah, we have still got thirteen lined up. Yep, and unlucky. that's gonna, yeah, and that's gonna take us up to right at the end of uh, 2024. So if you get one in now, you might be lucky. You might get get uh, just your question included in the very last episode, squeezed into the, this this year. Yeah, yeah but uh, if not, it'll be beginning of next. But you know, get your questions in, and we'll have a a darn good go at uh, answering them. <laughs>